grow lights. The amount of choices you have is staggering. And normally, that's awesome. But in the case of grow lights, it's simply too confusing. You need to make an informed decision to give your indoor plants the lumens they need. In this video, let's look at the three basic bulb types available for the indoor gardener and discuss which is the best choice for you and your plants. And it starts right now. For growing indoor plants, not all bulbs are created equal. And not all bulbs are equal in all situations. Our first bulb type is typically the best bulb that money can buy. Unfortunately, it's also out of the range of most indoor growers and backyard gardeners. These would be your high intensity diodes. These bulbs produce the most usable light for plants and are what most commercial growers use. Hands down, they're normally the best bulbs for imitating the sun. But they're not only expensive, they also run at an insane wattage and thus produce excessive heat. And they often require a separate ballast as well as cooling solutions, all out of the realm of what we're really trying to accomplish here today. So these bulbs actually come in two different types, high pressure sodium and metal halide. If eventually, you take your indoor growing operation to a commercial scale, quite likely you're going to be looking hard into high intensity bulbs. The second type of bulb typically seen in indoor grow setups are LEDs or light emitting diodes. LEDs are highly efficient bulbs. They're very cheap to run and they're very long lived. Unfortunately, they do come with a high upfront cost. And until recently, LED lights were not really an option for growing plants indoors. Now, that didn't stop the shady manufacturers from marketing their poor low light bulbs as grow lights. Fortunately, technology has now advanced to the point where LEDs are actually a truly viable option for the indoor mm. grower. So, the third and final type of bulb that are typically used in indoor grow setups are CFLs, compact fluorescents. CFL lights are typically the most economical bulbs in terms of the initial price tag. They're very efficient, although not quite as efficient as top of the line LED lights. For large grow operations, CFL bulbs may be right at the borderline of providing sufficient lumens. But for seedling starts, baby plants, clones, and even microgreens, these guys work amazingly well. And in fact, they would be my top choice for a simple indoor grow box like this one. the three types of indoor grow bulbs, we should also point out there's a plethora of choices of each category of bulb. Of course, why would anything ever be simple? When looking for a bulb to grow indoor plants, there's a range of the color spectrum that allows plants to accomplish different things. It's commonly put out there that blue lights are for vegetative growth and that the red spectrum is for flowering and bud production. And in the case of the sun, this is mostly true, but with manufactured light bulbs, so many corners are cut to achieve certain results and specs that you simply can't trust the usual blue for veg and red for bud mantra, so buyer beware. So what can you do? Well, in short, you do the best that you can. When using CFL bulbs, like we are here, you want to aim for a Kelvin temperature of around 6,500K. Now in retail bulbs, this is usually labeled as daylight. These are absolutely great for vegetative growth, especially in young plants, and they'll be perfectly fine for getting your seedlings started, as well as any clones you might have going. 
As for LEDs, if you're going to go down that road, don't get the dollar blue and red lights from eBay or Amazon thinking you've covered the full spectrum of light. You're going to be very disappointed with the results. If you've committed to LED, you're going to have to splurge and get proper grow bulbs. Shoot for 15 to 20 watts per square foot of growing area and you should be okay. The beauty of LED is that they produce next to no heat so they can simply be lowered to right on top of the plants without fear of burning them. Whatever bulb type you choose, do monitor your success rate as well as your plants growing habits. With seedlings, baby plants, and even clones, it's really easy to spot the deficiencies and poor growth and act accordingly. Best of all, have fun with it. We live in an amazing time where we actually have the technology to grow any crop anywhere on the planet. Growing a giant batch of basil in the dead of winter is ridiculously satisfying. Give indoor growing a try and leave a comment down below on how it went for you. Hey, hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind, and I'll see you in the next video.